Wretch like me. We don't like the idea of being called a wretch, but that's what we all were wretches, sinners. One of my great God's grace and mercy that we've been redeemed. Walk the Christ, the Christ of Jesus, shed blood on Calvary's cross some 2,000 plus years ago. And out of where would we be? Where would I be without your love, Lord? As the song says, I don't want to know. I don't want to know where I would be without your love, Father. Yes. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Father. Praise your name. Praise your name. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Pine Hills community and all of those out there in social media land. We're glad you're here with us this morning. And as I always like to say, Thank you for being here. There may be something, no, there will be something that will be said. Something that will encourage you the remainder of the day and the rest of the week. Some food that you can feast on in a spiritual way. I'm the Reverend John Christian here at Pioneers Community. And, and uh, we, we're about to open up service here. And, and we want to thank you for being with us, you out there in social media land. And if you don't mind, just go ahead and hit the like button and share with us, please. Let others see us. You here in the house today, we thank you for being here. You could have been somewhere else, but you chose to be here. We thank you for that. We're here today to glorify and praise our risen Savior, Jesus yes. the Christ, yes. Yeshua HaMashiach. And we also today, if you haven't figured it out by now, today is officially Grandparents Day. Yeah, I got my own grandparent. You know what? My, my, <laughs> my grandmom and granddaddy didn't dress like this, all right? They had overhauls on. And them big old dresses with a big curtain, you know, or, or apron down there. But my children didn't know that. They know the super fly look. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you know, I ventured and I dared and I did. That's why I'm dressed the way I am today to honor Grandparents Day. But more importantly, we also want to praise our risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, where would we be without parents and grandparents? Where would we be? Many a time when mom and dad couldn't help out, guess what? Nana was there. They would pop out, the grandparents. And, and we thank you, Lord, for them. Many of them had a lot of wisdom. They've been around a block a time or two, and they could share a few things with little young stuff, people like me. But anyway, we thank you for being here this morning. And we're now about to go into prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for that you've given us the opportunity, Lord, and the ability to, to come into the house this morning. Some couldn't make it, Lord. We pray that, Lord, that they're online somewhere, preferably here. But yet, Lord, we thank you. It's a reminder to us that you still have us here for a reason, for a purpose, to glorify your name, to lift you up, to honor you in everything that we do. You've given us that power, God. And we want to walk in it, Father. And we thank you just for who you are and what you are and what you've been to us. In your name we pray and we thank you and we, Lord, we just, we just want to give you what we got, Lord. Yes. Give you what we got. Oh, Lord, we may not have felt like it this morning, but, Lord, we, we still want to give you that from a humble, a humble perspective. And you honor that. We're thankful, Lord, for that. And in your name we pray and say amen and amen. 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 Without amen. further ado. Amen. We are going to listen to the PACC Voices of Praise featuring Sister Roberta Williams.
giving God praise? How many know there's joy, peace, love all in the room? Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Can somebody just clap their hands and give God their best praise? Come on. We declare that God is great and he's greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, our God is worthy. The fact that you're breathing and living right now, it gives a reason for you to give God praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. This is a song my grandma used to sing back in the days. Come on, let's have church. Come on, clap those hands.
like the Lord. Tell them nobody. Hallelujah. I said, look at your neighbor and tell them nobody. I said, look at your neighbor and tell them nobody. Y'all don't want to have no church today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody do me like Jesus. Y'all gotta get this personal. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus.
just said do anybody got a goodness list that when you when you look at that list you start seeing all of the things that God has done for you you start you you start counting off all the ways that he's made I said when you think when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all not some of it but all that he's done for me I can't help but give him praise hallelujah hallelujah Need somebody to shout, show you right, show you right, show you right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you, thank you guys for being here this morning with us. Amen. 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 And I'm I'm glad about what God is doing in this season. Is anybody glad about what he's doing? Amen. I said, don't fool me. Is anybody glad about what he's doing? Amen. 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 Um, sound team, if I can get somebody to come and turn these monitors, I cannot myself at all. So I just need somebody to turn these monitors for me. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be yelling at y'all and I can't hear myself because I can't hear me. Amen. Amen. So thank you for those who are tuning in to Facebook um, and watching us via in the Facebook land. Um, we thank you so much for tuning in and watching us. And I want to honor and celebrate our grandparents on today. Day. Come on, let's celebrate our grandparents. Hallelujah. If you can, real quick, all of our grandparents, just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Let us recognize you. You're a grandparent. Amen. Just wave your hand. Amen. Come on, let's honor them. Let's clap for them. Amen. Amen. And at the end of this service, you may be seated. At the end of this service, we are going to... Um, honor the oldest grandparent, and we're going to honor the youngest grandparent, and um, we're going we're gonna to leave, we're gonna leave for the day with a little, little something in your pocket and go get you something to eat or something, go to Home Goods, get you some kind of something, and uh, somebody about to win some money today, amen, yeah, man, pastors love blessing um, people, that's where I get my blessings from. Another wrong with sowing seed. Amen. If it was not for our grandparents, if it was not for our seniors, um, especially here at Pine Hill Community Church, I don't know how far this church would have came um, without your support, your prayers, your consistency, your commitment, and all of what you do for Pine Hill Community Church. Amen. 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 Before I get into the word, um, we're going to dismiss our children today. We're, gonna, we're testing out something. Um, we're going to dismiss our children. Our children are going to go with Miss Tiffany today. Amen. Amen. So in just a few, in just a few moments,
just a few moments. Not yet, not yet. Look, look, the parents ready to go. Yeah, they ready. They ready. I'm sorry, Tiffany. They, they, re they ready to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, take mine. Go ahead, take them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I do want to say this. Listen, um, our, our church, um, our members, some of our members are going through some, some transitional periods right now. And I, I need and I know you guys are praying. Continue to pray. I got a text last this last night. Um, I don't know if he's here still, but Greg, that was do, helping with the sound, his mom passed. His mom passed. Um, so we want to keep Greg in prayer. Also, we want to keep. She's she's amazing to me. Um, we just we've been working together for these last few months. She helps me out quite a bit. You guys know her as our business manager, Sister Deborah Scott. Right now, she's at the hospital, and she doesn't know what's going to happen as it relates to her mom. If anybody knows Sister Scott, she was about her mother. Uh, and so I want you to, she probably going to get mad at me, but I want you to bombard her phone with love, text messages, um, she, she needs it right now. Even um, uh, Trustee Scott outside, let's love on them today. If I'm missing anybody else, please, let's continue to pray for everybody. Um, these are some trying times, some rough times. Um, so I definitely want to, I need your help with spreading the love, that comfort. We don't know when we're going to be needed. So I just want the church to be ready as it relates to um, if there's any funerals, we will need your help. Church is about showing love. Amen. Amen. And we want to be here for all of our family members because we don't, all of our friends, all the members at the church, because we don't know when a situation might hit our lives. And sometimes you just, you need more than just a piece of chicken. Sometimes we need your presence. And even after that, we still need your presence to help us continue. So, Sister Scott, if you're watching, if you're not watching, I hope that you get this message. We love you. All of those who are sick and shut in, we love you. Um, and we're praying for you here at Pine Hills Community Church. Amen? Amen. 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 We're about to go ahead and dismiss our kids, but they can go ahead. Tiffany, wave your hand in the back. Tiffany's going to meet them in the foyer, so you can let uh, your child go. Um, they're gonna go, and we're gonna be done. I'm, I'm I definitely want to be done in the next 20, 25 minutes. Amen. And so we're dismissing them. We're going from there. Amen. So I, I want to give honor to all of our members, everybody, also to my wife um, for her being here, to Reverend Christian, his wife, um, those who work alongside us, all of the leaders in their respective places, our ushers, our deacons, everybody, to the musicians. Uh, everybody, and thank you so much for Brian Pope, who continues to help our church out in this time. I said thank you to Brian Pope. Amen. I need the church. Come on. Amen. Amen. Um, Brian continues to help us out. Thank God that it works out that his church going to start at 3 o'clock, um, but he comes every other Sunday to help us out as we are looking want to get a praise and worship leader in place um, for our church, but I'm dedicated to um, um, getting the proper sound that we need um, in this place, and I want to say thank you to our uh, praise and worship team for being so faithful and committed, so faithful and committed. Um, not one time do they complain, um, not at all, at all, at all, and so uh, I thank God for them and the help me in this time. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the subject title today um, in this series of Transformers. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Um, I'm going to be coming from different, um, how would I say, different chapters in the Bible. Uh, in different books of the Bible. Uh, and the reason why I haven't gave you a scripture yet, because I just want to talk for a brief moment. 
Um, Lord, be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I we, we was talking in our series about if we're going to be transformational leaders, if we're going to be a church that is full of transformation, we got to have core values. It is a reason why businesses have core values is because the goal is is for the people who work for that particular business, um, they should represent what that business believe at its core. And so, so when it comes down to making tough decisions, we said this last week, what will help you in life make some of your tough business decisions your tough family decisions is what you believe at the core. What do you value at the core? Because if you make this decision, is it going to match up with what you believe at the core? Because if you don't believe, if, if, you, if this decision doesn't match what you believe at the core, then you're going to be uncomfortable in your going. You're going to be uncomfortable being, watch this, uh, you're going to be uncomfortable in your functioning because it could be you're operating to what somebody else values when you don't value that. Some people respond to life by always being angry. They can't never handle conflict without rage. I work with children, so when it comes down to working with our kids and they got behavior issues, they think that they can handle it by a punch. They think that they can handle it by spitting on another child. They think that they can handle it in any way of their anger. Some of my kids, watch this, they won't punch you, they'll run up under the table and they just want to stay there. Don't bother them, why? Because that's the way they express themselves. But what I got to do is, I got to learn, I had to learn as a person who works with behavior, if the child is not learning how I want them to, maybe it's not the child, it could be the way that I'm teaching. So I got to think outside the box if I'm going to get the child to function in what I value. Because my principal, my boss, my boss values uh, community. She values relationship. She values, watch this, um, a, 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 an environment that's good for learning. Come on, I'm, I got some teachers, some principals in here. You, you, you want an environment that's conducive where the child can learn and they're not being bullied and they're not being frustrated and they're not being agitated. So what I got to do is I got to take what she values and then watch this. I got to impute that into our children. It cannot be forced. It has to be strategic and you got to take time. Some of us are not patient enough to deal with people who are not saved. Because for some reason, we forgot that we was off the chain too. Because they're not listening to uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson and the Five Cooling Stones, because they're not listening to, watch this, they're not listening to Lee Williams and they're not listening to John P. Key, they're not listening to, so now you shun them away when in actuality, God is counting on you to get what he values in them but you don't because you just want to preach and you're frustrated because they don't get it I don't want to mess with them young boogers I don't want to do I don't want to I don't want to have nothing to do with them but could it be it's your approach could it be that it's too much of you and not enough God transformational leadership will cause you to be patient and strategic. You can't rush this. You got to take your time and get what matters to God. And if, if you're going to give them what matters to God, you've got to be with God. 
Because if you're trying to give them God, but you're not with God, how can you effectively give them what God wants you to give them? Come here, husbands. If you, if you want a house of peace, how can you effectively give that house what's needed in that house? How can that house have peace if you don't never try to bring peace? Everything is an argument. You agitated about everything. Come on, women, talk to me. We, you, 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 every, everything frustrates you. Just I can't do nothing right. I, I try to clean. I try to cook. And then I cook. It's too much salt. And, 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 and then it's not enough salt. Then I, I give you some soda, but I didn't put it in the cup that you wanted it in. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can, but it seems as if you're always frustrated now you don't want to be around me. You don't want to do me. You don't want to. You don't want to. When I say do me, you don't. You don't want. You don't. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't have nothing to do with me. You don't. You just shun me away. But yet and still, you say you want peace in the home. As, as I look at being a transformational leader, I'm seeing something. Um, being a transformational transformational leader could possibly sometimes place you in front of people who desire a lot of attention but they will not budge the Pharisees of the day of that day back in the Bible they did just that they had questions and comments about Jesus about about things that he did and 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 and, and when Jesus spoke up and gave them attention and he talked about it Though they, though they were looking for an answer, they didn't want the message of truth. They just want to. They just want to question what Jesus is doing. But you don't want to change from how you're thinking. There's an author by the name of uh, uh, Jerry C. Wolford. He wrote an amazing book called Transformational Leader. As I've been studying different books and, and thoughts on transformational leadership. He says this, they rather kill the nonconformist than consider the truth of his message. They rather kill the nonconformist, watch this, than consider the truth of this me his message. Jesus would not conform to how they thought. But they wanted to kill him. They want to murder you. Do you know that there are people that, that, that's hating on you because you're not changing the way you think? You're not thinking how they think? You think outside the box? You're not limited in your thinking? When they see a no, you see a yes. When they see, watch this, a barricade or a wall, you see yourself busting through it. Watch this. You can't, don't tell me what I can't do because I'll mess around and show you that I can do. Yeah, don't, don't tell me what I can't do. Don't, tell, don't, don't, don't mess around. One thing about me, man, don't, don't tell me you'll stop me. Because I'll, 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 I'll show you that watch this. And it's not about, I, I wanted you to understand, it's not about you being, um, I want to use the word cocky, but it's not, I don't think it's it. Um, it's not about you being, um, hmm, I can't help but use that word. It's not about you being cocky like you just, you think you're all that. No, it's, it's that I know who I serve. Watch this. I, I know who's in me. So if God is unstoppable, I know that all I need is just a resource. S some of your answers are in resources. You're frustrated because you're stuck and you're not really stuck. You just ain't found the right connect. the right connect. So please understand you're not going to stop Jesus from thinking the way he thinks. And you don't, you're not going to change him because his, his assignment is to come and change you. Pastor Miles, hurry up and talk about what you need to talk about. Well, if you look at Matthew chapter 12 and when we look at Verses 1, I think it's verses uh, 
1 through 8. Let's, let's look at something real quick. Matthew chapter 12. I only got about 15 minutes left. Verses 1 through 8. Look, look, look at this. I'm reading from the expanded version. It says, at the time Jesus was walking through some fields of grain on a Sabbath day, his followers, the disciples, were hungry. So they began to pick the grain and eat it. When the Pharisees saw this, look at what the Pharisees said to Jesus. Look, your followers are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath day. Because in that time, you was not supposed to be going out to work. It was forbidden. Jesus answered verse 3. Watch this. Have you not read what David did when he and the people with him were hungry? He went into God's house and, and, and he and those with him ate the holy bread, which was lawful. It was allowed. Only for priests to eat. Verse 5 says, and have you not read in the law of Moses that on every Sabbath day the priests in the temple break this law about the Sabbath day? But the priests are not wrong for doing that. I tell you that there is something here that is greater than the temple. The scripture says, I want kindness more than I want an animal, more than I want animal sacrifices. See, some of you, some of, in that time, they were so big, the Pharisees were so big on you keeping the law to the point where they didn't want to show mercy and kindness. They were so big on you doing the thing, but internally they're not being attained. And what they did was, watch this, they'll give you all of the law so that you can keep this, and they wasn't even keeping it. Internally jacked up. So you, you mean to tell me you rather for an animal to eat and be full and a human not to eat and be starving? Where is Jesus in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the Pharisees are trying to get Jesus to change his mind to watch this, the laws of the land in the earth to get you to be religious instead of you thinking outside of this box. Yeah. The reason why we think outside the box is because we got we got watch this church, we got a proper interpretation of the scriptures. Not because we want to be seen, not because we want to be known, it's because we got a full revelation of what God is talking about in the scriptures. And when you are functioning out of the box, you are basically saying, I, I am full aware of what God is doing with me. I got a revelation, I got a download, and some of you that are in the earth, these Pharisees, watch this, they have, they have the word, but they have a misinterpretation of the word. And when you got misinterpretation, you got bad application. When you got misinterpretation, you got bad application. If you are doing bad, you have not interpreted what you read, the information that you have. Yeah, man, like, like you just, you're just doing any old thing, and it, it is not God because your interpretation is wrong. That's why it's good for you to sit down in Bible study, and it's in, important for you to ask questions. It's important for you to watch this. When we're in Bible study with Reverend Christian, it's not good to just sit on the phone and be silent. We should be asking questions. You should be pulling on the man of God. You should be pulling on them. Why? Because it's our assignment to dig and to get more revelation so it can illuminate your mind in this world. Because if you're not getting a illumination, then you will not be light to where there's darkness. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your time to shine. It's your time to shine because you got the proper interpretation. You got Oh, my God, you got revelation of who you are and whose you are. 
not just sit there just to have a job. You sit there because God put you there. You sit there because God want to bring change to a thing. You sit there because God has sent you as help. You got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a helper. You have the Holy Ghost. You are an assist. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. You are to come in. Watch this. Not saying I think I'm all that. But please understand, I ain't no little nothing neither. When I do step up in here, God's going to show up and show out. And because I don't think like you, don't mean that I'm dumb. Don't mean that I don't know. It means that I got a full revelation. Don't, 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 don't look at, oh my God, I oh God, don't, 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 don't fool me. Is there anybody in here that ever pull on the revelation of God? Don't, don't just give me the scripture, God. I need you to speak to me. I need you to, I need you to show me what this really is saying. I, I know I see this, but I need you to really tell, reveal to me what this is saying. And, and I know what you were saying in that time, but how can I make this applicable to where I am right now? How, how do I make this for me right now as a man, as a woman, as a leader, as a business owner, as a person who worked on this job? How does this apply to me so that I can be effective in what you want me to be as a representative? Representative. Because <sighs> the goal is for you to be a transformational leader, a transformer. So I got to have my core values. And also, I have to have the proper interpretation of the text so that I can have the right application in my life. Sometimes, fellas, because we don't read the Bible, we're living out the wrong application. Because you depend on the preacher, you don't ever study for yourself. And the Bible says study to show thyself approved. Ladies, you can't really be what you need to be to your man because <laughs> you don't ever get any scriptures. But you're looking for transformation. But you never ask God, God, speak to me where I am so that I can understand it. Because God would never leave you in the dark. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. Come on, help me, church. Ask, and it shall be. Yeah. I'm not going to leave you on this island by yourself. I'm God. I love you. I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you. Because watch this. You are a transformer. You change the game. Can somebody just say that over the Close your eyes real quick and say, I changed the game. Yeah, I changed the game. I changed the game. You got to believe that, that you changed the game. Wherever God puts you to function, you changed the game. To my grandparents in here, you changed the game. You change the game. That's why some of the grandchildren, they still, they still, watch this, they always honor you and say, if it was not for grandma prayers. If it was not for grandma and put some money on the table. If it was not for grandma making a meal out of nothing. She just know how to take a hot dog and some baked beans and turn that thing into some beans and weenies and it'll last us all week. I wish I had somebody that had a grandma like mine that just, that, and don't you throw away that pot liquor in that pot because we're going to use that too. We're going to use. We're going to use everything we, we got. Don't, 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 say, don't you tell me we need a dryer uh, 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 just because we got a washing machine. No, uh, 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 go hang them clothes out there on that line. Yeah, go hang. Y'all ain't from the country. I, I, go, go hang them clothes out there on, them, on that line. And that's the best dryer ever. Y'all play with it if you want to. It, 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 it is something about your stiff t shirt. Bad interpretation to give you bad application. Jesus does a soft and gentle scolding. He's soft and gentle about getting you correct. Pastor Miles, <laughs> I'm so slow to talk about this because I'm, I love kingdom teaching. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I study the kingdom. My, one of my mentors, I love his teacher, my, Dr. Miles Monroe. I, I, if you ever get me anything for 
um, my birthday or a gift. I love Miles Monroe books. I love it has revolutionized my thinking as it relates to Christianity, as it relates to being a believer. Because watch this, God, God is not so big up on your religion. Every else, oh, y'all ain't ready for this, y'all. You know, you know, you know, you know why they even call you Christians? Yeah, do you know why they call you Christians? You, 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 you. They, it was at the Antioch where they just saw they saw Jesus follow as fo those followers following Jesus, and they just called them Christians. It's, it's Jesus is not big on whether you watch this your religion and and all this other extra stuff. He's big on do you know the King? Do, do you know the king? Do you know what a king does when he decree a thing? That's what it is. You don't you don't have an option when the king speaks. When the king says it is, that's what it is. See, the problem is we got too much of us. And it's too much of us to have been out and we've taken it and it's on the internet. And because we don't study, we depend on somebody else. And now we got a bad interpretation which messes up our application. And you can't explain it to young adults because young adults will stretch your thinking. Oh, my God, I'm talking. They will stretch your mind and ask you questions. Then watch this. You ain't even read about. You don't know about because all you did was read black and white. And the Bible says the letter kill it. Because if you just read the word for what it is and not ask God to give you a proper interpretation of the text, it's bad application. And now the young people, the young adults are too much. We can't handle them and they can't come in our churches because y'all doing too much. It's too much. It's too much. No, it's just the mere fact that it will stretch your thinking because every young person is not dumb. Some of them have been enlightened and then watch this because some of us have not got a proper interpretation and we can't explain it. Then we get mad when they go to Buddha and they go to all these other things and they're worshiping frogs and, and they're worshiping the universe. And they think that, watch this, they lighten these candles will change the thing. And when a person dies, they think that they can speak to that person when they're dead. No, that's not. That's not. That's not it. No, no. You got to tell a young, young person. No, that, you, no, no. When they're dead, they're they gone. It, it, ain't, it, ain't no, it ain't no talking to grandma. No, you want to see grandma, get your life together. You want to you talk to grandma, get saved. No, 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 no. Grandma is not taking the place of God. Wrong interpretation of the text is bad application, which now you cannot bring transformation. You cannot be a transformer if you don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. I know I'm in the scripture, y'all. As we're getting ready to come to a close, because Lord, say take your time, Miles, as you're teaching on this stuff, because I really need y'all to get it. And as we get ready, I, I know where we're going for next year. God has already been dealing with me as to where we are, where we're going next year, and what we're going to be doing as a church. But I need you to get your minds ready for it because we need transfer, transformational leaders in the pews. I need you to start thinking bigger than what you're thinking. I need you to start thinking, watch this, because there's more to you than what you've been doing. There's more that God is required. For some of you in here, God is pulling on you. He wants to the stuff that you learn in your past, watch this, he don't want you to do away with it. He's going to use it to help catapult you to this next level. Yeah. There's going to be a stretching. It's going to be a stretching. So we're getting prepared for it. I want to I say this. I want to say this. Um, there are going to be people that don't want the truth. And the reason why they're not going to want the truth, the Pharisees didn't want the truth, because it will cost them their status. It would interfere with the way they live or it mess up their misunderstandings. So the only thing that they can do is murder Jesus. Whenever you start interfering with the way somebody lives and it's biblical, one of the things they're going to want to do is get rid of you. They ain't going to want you around them. Because you 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 in a whole nother zone. 
you in a whole, you have no clue who you talking to. And watch this. I'm closing. I'm done because I, I told y'all, I told, told Tiffany, I, I want to make sure we out of here and we're going to go on, we're going to go to the next Sunday and we're going to deal with this. Watch this. Even, it is not just unbelievers. Believers sometimes don't even know who they're talking to. Watch this. You don't know. Okay, Pastor Miles, please give me, give me some scripture. Because, Pastor Miles, John 14, and I'm getting out of here. 5 through 14. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Verse 6. Jesus answered, saying, I am the way. And the truth and the life. No one comes to me except through, watch this, verse 7. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Verse 8, watch what Philip says. Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, do you know me, Philip? Even after I've been, watch this, among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Watch this. Philip is with Jesus, and he's a believer, and he don't know who, he, oh my God, who's standing in front of him. You are asking for God, and God is right there in the flesh. Please don't act like we're going to get down on Philip, because some of us in here, been in situations where God been right there and oh my God. And because you so stuck in the earth realm, you don't have no full revelation that God's been with you the whole time. Oh, calm down, Pastor Miles. I just came to tell you, and I'm going to let y'all leave out of here, that some of you, oh my God, you got to get this revelation that you serve the God, his name is Emmanuel. He's God with us that wherever you are you don't catch him by surprise whatever situation you're going through it's not catching him by surprise you just got to get the full revelation even when things are hard even when life deals you oh my god it deals you some bad cards you got to go through some death you might have to go through some losses. You might have to go through some being broken. You might have to go through some financial issues. But please understand that God is right there. I don't know who I'm coming for today, and I got to get up out of here. I just came to tell you that, watch this, let's be clear that God, oh my God, God wants you to have a revelation of this, that I'm with you, that I see you, that I'm not going nowhere. Oh my God, you got to understand, I told y'all this, he sits high and he looks low. He knows exactly where you are. Everybody stand to your feet. Listen to me. Listen to me. Um, Pastor Miles, you could have gave me that Easter speech out the door. Um, what, what, what are you trying to say today, Pastor Miles? God is requiring you to stretch your thinking. No longer do he just want to give you information. He wants you to have revelation. Because where you're going, I'm not doing something normal with you. I'm not doing something normal with you. I'm not doing something normal with you. God wants you to get a full revelation that I am orchestrating your steps. I am ordering your moves. You are not catching me by surprise. I put you on that job for a reason. I took you from there because I'm about to show you your next. I'm going to reveal to you why I picked you. I'm going to show you why you're still living. I'm going to reveal to you that your word still matters, that your prayer still works, that I've heard every prayer, every tear you cried, 
I was right there wiping your tears. Every pain you had, I was right there making sure that you be confident. I just need you to get a full revelation that I know where I'm taking you. Without the drums, just stay here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Some of you have losses. People in your family have died. It's not that God want to leave you miserable. It's that we all got a time to go. But God want to show some of you that you can do this. You didn't know you was this strong. You didn't know that, watch this, you were trying to figure out, I don't know if I can carry this burden. But look how far God has brought you already. Is there anybody here that lost a loved one that can testify? I know it was nobody but God's help. So sometimes God will deal you, he'll give you some situations so that, watch this, to see how you're going to handle it. So that you can function in revelation of who you are and what he called you to be and what he called you to do. And just because he take away, that don't mean God is not going to give you something new, something fresh. Some of you, when it comes down to death, it doesn't, God don't give you a new man. God just gives you a new revelation. Sometimes when God takes a mother, God don't give you another mother. He might just give you revelation. He might just show you you're stronger than you think you are. Let's be clear. You need a proper interpretation of what God is saying to you in this season. And you got to be careful of letting unauthorized people come into your life to give you advice on something they never even been through. Or something they don't have no kind of revelation of. Some people in your life are illegal. They're felonious in their character. It's a crime. But because you don't have a proper interpretation of the text, you keep letting illegal folk speak into your ear. And God is trying to tell you, if you got in this word, you will block off people that don't fully understand why you're here and what your purpose is and what God has called you to do. But once you got a full revelation of what you're called to do, baby, I love you, but um, I, I can't talk to you no more. Matter of fact, I'm not sharing this dream with you. I'm not sharing this vision with you because every time I talk about this vision, you always hating, you always downplaying, you always dilute what I, the vision that I have. You ain't the person clearly to be talking to. I need somebody that, oh my God, that got the Holy Ghost to agree with me that this is my season. This is my due season. That this is my due season. This is my due season. This is, I need somebody to shout. This is my due season. Hey, this is my due season. Wait a minute. You're trying to convince people who are unauthorized in your life that this season is yours. You're illegal in the spirit. How are you going to tell me what a pastor do when you've never been a pastor? Let that sizzle in your spirit. You don't even deal with the demons I wrestle with. Y'all ain't hearing me. But sometimes, man, I, I come to find out people can pastor way better than you. So they think and it's not about a race. You better be ready for this warfare. But few are chosen. I hear you, mama. You ain't ready for this. Everybody got advice. And I appreciate it. I know when, when something's right, I won't check it. I'm, I'm good. But there's some stuff you are legal in, and I just can't accept it. I can't accept it because you're not, you're not authorized to function in this role. 
And because you never had a leader to tell you you're not unauthorized, now you get bitter mad, run down the street, and go get another pastor who will listen to what you want. And they function how you want. And they don't function in God. I'm getting so comfortable with being me, Chairman Cooper, it's crazy. I ain't preaching like nobody. I don't want to be like the preacher down the street. I don't want to be like the preacher last year. I don't want to be, I, I want to be me. Is there anybody in here that's just like me? I don't want to be nobody else. Can I just be myself? Please, can I just be me? Can I just be me? This is what I'm releasing you to do. Be yourself. Let God give you revelation. Let God talk. I need somebody to receive this. Hold your hands up. Be yourself. Be yourself. Let God give you revelation on your house. Let God give you revelation in your season. Let God be, oh my God. Let God take time with you so that you can be the transformer needed. Watch this. Because some of you, your peace is tied to it. Some of you, your next level money is tied to it. Some of you, your next house is tied to it. Some of you, your business is tied to it. Oh my God. Contract is tied to it. For some of you, your health is tied to it. Yeah. You're not going to have a mental breakdown. I saw, my God, you're not going to have a mental breakdown. I come against the anxiety spirit. I come against that anxious spirit. I come against your mind being, oh my God, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Be yourself. Write your thoughts. Grab your journal. Let it, oh my God, in your cell phone. Make sure you download the application for notes so that you can write your thoughts. Some of you got poems in you. Some of you got cards on the inside of you. Yeah, some of you got systems and strategies that is needed in the secular realm. God's downloading your system, in your mind, in your heart. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this word. I thank you for transformation in this house. I thank you, God, for those of us, God, that are accepting this word. That God, however you want us to be, we are accepting your way. God, we are pulling on you to give us proper interpretation of the text so that we can apply it to our lives and be effective in the earth. We are kingdom citizens. We're blessed people. We are the head and not the tail. We're the lender and not the buyer. We are above and not beneath. We are representatives of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I do something? Uh, come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, just hold your hands up. Give me my mask. Get deep down so they know. All right. I'm good. I'm good. Bro. Listen. Um, they tell me I can't really touch members because they want this COVID. But I'm going to do, do what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. All right. There's a couple of times that I was thinking about you. God's going to be stretching you. I know you're a part of the group. God's going to be stretching you. There's a pull in the spirit to 
what God want to do with you. You hear what I'm saying? You ain't going to think like how everybody else thinks. Not saying that you're downplaying what they do, because the group is amazing. God's going to be stretching you even the more. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. That's what I'm going to give you. I don't know what else to tell you, because that's all God gave me. There is a stretch that he's going to be doing. And you just need to follow the Holy Spirit. Your surroundings may change. It's all because he's stretching you. You can't live the way you used to live. He's not playing with you because you're anointed. You're called by God. You're set apart for his use. You can't play with him. There's an anointing on you. It don't make sense. Sometimes how God skip on folks and choose people. But know you chose it. Wherever this lay, and it lay. I'll just wait for the manifestation of the word. Because thou my assignment it was to just tell you that. He is stretching. Can I touch your hands? You're welcome. You're welcome. If you can stretch your hands towards this way. Lord, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for what you're going to do with him. I thank you for the transfer, Father God. Father God, use him in a mighty way. Father God, for the stretch. Touch his voice. Touch his hands. Touch his mind. Touch his connection. And Father God, I pray for his hearing right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that what he hears is your voice. Give him what's needed in this season. Give him what's needed in this season for where you're about to take him. God, we bless your name in this place. Father God, let him not walk in fear. Let him not be scared. You're transitioning him for a reason. New mind. New mind. New mind. And God even going to expand you even in your musicianship. Oh, yeah. There's some stuff that's in you that God's going to use you mightily. And I'm just glad that you're here at Pine Hills Community Church so that from this word, we will see the manifestation of what God is going to do with you. God, we thank you. Now, God, I pray that your angels be encamped around him. Let no trap, let no satanic attack come nigh him. Let him be alert. Let him be able to see it before it happens. I come against every trap, every snare that will try to come and tear him down. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's get up out of here. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta sow. We gotta sow. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on Facebook. If you're not saved and you want to be saved today, hey, make that decision. Make that decision today. We want you to join us because that watch this. After this life is over, we're gonna be celebrating in heaven. It's gonna be a real party. And so we want you to join us. And if you don't have a church home where you can be fed or be stretched, our prayer is that you come to Pine Hills Community Church. Hey Amen. I need to get my thing. I pray that you come to Pine Hills Community Church where you can get that and we can assist you. We got so many great people here that you can meet and join in, commune with. We want you to be connected at the church here. Is there anybody in here before we move along? Maybe you're not saved. And you say, Pastor Miles, I'm saved, but I don't have a church home. And I want to make Pine Hills Community Church my church home. If that's you in here, don't hesitate no more. Don't wait. Come, in and, come on and join us. Give us a year. Give us a year. Let's see what we can do from here. All heads are bowed. Everybody praying. We bless you, God. Will there be one? Bless you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you are giving, if you are giving, you can give via Tithely, also via Cash App. I think it's Money Sign Love PHCC. Money Sign Love PHCC. Your seed, your offering is doing something here at the church. We are getting things done, and we got way more to do. So we thank you so much for uh, uh, giving. So make sure you can do that via Cash App, or you can drop that off 
here at the church. Just type in the comments if you need that assistance and we can help you. Thank you so much for joining us via Facebook. We love you. We appreciate you. Till next time, see you later. Come on, let's get in the church.